Good evening, um, and so glad you could join us this evening. Um, I have with me two good-looking guests, one human and <laughs> one animal. Um, and this is Lisa Ferdinando. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. And this, is, this handsome dog here is an American Brittany named Byron. Byron. So we're going to try and keep him here for a little while so the camera can get some shots of him because he's a handsome dog. But um, for those of you out there watching, Lisa's normally behind one of those cameras. Um, but what she's done that I think is so neat is she, she fosters. Um, so a couple things, um, Lisa. One is, you know, why do you foster rather than own your own dog? And then how did you learn about fostering? And then how do you foster a particular breed if you choose to do that? So um, the first question, I guess, is why do you foster rather than having your own dog? Well, for me, I... Um decided to foster um, because uh, with my schedule it worked for me to foster so that way I could make a short-term commitment to a dog and so it's a good way to give a homeless animal a home a temporary home uh, without giving the commitment of a permanent full-time home uh, as you know dogs live for you know so 10, it works around your years. lifestyle yeah it so. works around my lifestyle and I also picked a breed that worked with my lifestyle my work schedule my my living uh, you know I live in a condo so I have to be mindful of my neighbors I need to walk the dog in the morning I need to come home from work so I needed a breed that also fit with that lifestyle so um, does the American Brittany I mean what's its what what it's it, why does it fit that lifestyle as opposed to say uh, Yorkie or I mean there's some teeny tiny dogs and most people would think well why doesn't she have a teeny tiny dog if she's going to be in an apartment why a Brittany? Well actually American uh, Brittany's are very active dogs so I go for seniors so that's, <laughs> <laughs> and that is true I ask for a senior dog but uh, Brittany's are very friendly animals oh. so that's one thing I was looking for. So they warm up to you quickly? Yeah they warm up and they're also friendly I have neighbors uh, oh. there's, there are children in, in, um, oh, yeah. in my development there are other animals I like to go to dog parks I like to do social things in Alexandria um, so I wanted a friendly dog, but also one that was older that would have less energy. So I did research, and then I came upon American Brittany Rescue, which um, was able to um, place an older dog with me. Actually, my foster passed away. I actually ended up adopting her. I remember. So this was a few years yeah. ago, and so I'm just borrowing <laughs> Byron for the evening. Uh, he yeah, we're thanking Karen. I don't remember her last name, but, <laughs> but we, we are thanking uh, this this lovely woman who drove all the way over to Annapolis tonight, um, which just shows the dedication of people in these animal programs. I mean, I'm, I, when you said she was coming out from Maryland, I was, I was just shocked. So obviously the program is very strong. Absolutely, and there's a, an entire nationwide network of volunteers that will do um, transports from, for example, like North Carolina up to New York. So just a whole, um, you know, ladder of volunteers who might drive an hour, an hour and a half to move a dog, and then somebody else will get the dog moving an hour, an hour and a half, and then to a permanent or to a foster home. Yeah, and I think that's what Amy, Amy, our director, um, and her husband do the transportation part of it. Um, but when you decided, I mean, so you did research on breeds. Is that how you started out when you decided yes. you wanted to foster? Mm -hmm. And then you came across the, the Spaniel, the Brittany, the American mm -hmm. Brittany Spaniel. And I wanted a dog that uh, is a little active and that I can play with and that I can take to the park versus like a lap dog, which is also great. A <laughs> lot of my neighbors have lap dogs too, so they're, they're very sweet dogs as well. And another great thing about the rescue, and you can go, you know, all different breeds, you know, uh, Labrador Retriever, just any breed, you can just go online and see uh, what rescues are available. But it also um, takes, might take a dog out of a shelter, so then um, other dogs can, so there, are, there, there will be room for, you know, more dogs and more animals in the shelter. Uh, when you start moving animals out. Yeah, because wasn't Karen saying this dog was with, uh, was it dropped off somewhere in the in district? In Washington, yeah, yeah. And then it was taken to the, it was taken to another organization where it had a better chance of being. And then it was moved to the American Britain okay. Rescue. Wow, I mean, this is amazing <laughs> that, um, and look at how he is. He's really taken to this this gal who's shared her, sharing her home, <laughs> she and her husband are sharing her home. Look at him, he's all settled down now. 
So he's, he's basically still a puppy, right? Yes, he's a year and a half. Um, so he has a lot of energy. So I really wouldn't be fostering this kind of dog. No, at least during the um, week. You, want to let, you yeah. can let him go if you want to know. <laughs> he's been a good boy. Thank you, bye Byron. Bye, Byron. Byron. <laughs> <laughs> so how many um, years ago did you start, and how many animals have you fostered? Probably about three or four years ago. Um, I started with... Just started missing having a dog? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I grew up with animals, and I've always loved animals. I've always wanted a dog, uh, but with my work schedule, it's very difficult. So, and that's a good way. And even, um, you know, maybe somebody who's older and just wants to test out if this animal is right for them. And that's another thing you might do research and realize that, okay, I, I don't like this about this breed, so I'm going to try a different breed. But then it also... Um, gives a homeless animal a home, which is very important. Well, I know the um, Animal Welfare League is, has a real active fostering program now, and we end up more than not having to find foster homes for these litters of kitties, mm -hmm. and that's a real commitment. And we've had one couple on here that every time they foster, they adopt. So, they <laughs> <laughs> so, so is that is that fairly common, do you think? Or? I think a lot of people who do foster really do want a dog and end up adopting. I know I adopted my first foster. Yeah, so it's, it's I think if you have it long enough and then you think about letting it go, it's, and as you said, it was a senior dog. It's very hard to let it go. So, <laughs> so this is a dangerous program to get involved in. <laughs> there have been many failed fosters. <laughs> Or, not, or success on the part of the animal, yeah, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to um, sign up again, or right now you're work? so you are, so you're on the hunt for more senior yeah, dogs? Yeah, so Especially with winter coming and fall and winter, and you'll be home probably a lot. Yeah, and it's just nice to, you know, you can take them to the park, play ball, do all sorts of fun things. So, so um, now you, I guess while you have the animal, we need to, tell the people you have to assume some medical responsibility or do you call the um, the foundation and the, you know the the nonprofit if you have medical problems how does that work well it, it probably varies foster to foster but with American Brittany rescue you know every dog is uh, neutered or spayed so if it was done previously obviously you don't have to take care of that but um, a lot of dogs that are strays or may not have been neutered or spayed previously um, it would be your job to take it in and get it. Get but I mean, it. if it encounters an illness, you take it to yeah, your the, veterinarian. I mean, so um, part I, of it is. There's also a network of um, preferred veterinarians oh. um, that they might have dealt with previously because the, it's a volunteer organization, so they would want to keep the costs as low as possible. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, that would be something that someone would be concerned about, especially if they're fostering an older animal that might be starting to have some physical problems. You know, and the cost of veterinarians can be high, especially if it's a senior who's retired. Absolutely. So they would just get back in touch with the organization. And, and, and um, the rescue will take care of that, oh. those expenses, because it's not your dog. Okay, so that's, that's good to know. Yeah. That's good to tell the folks. And if you can uh, provide food or anything that would oh. alleviate costs from the rescue, they welcome that. So I guess the rescue zone is like many nonprofits then has to raise some money. Absolutely. Do they have some special events? Absolutely. They have uh, picnics, they have fundraisers, they have, you can go to their website, which we've listed, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they sell, they sell items, they sell Brittany items, they sell calendars, and in fact, one of my uh, previous fosters, I took a picture and it was actually on the cover <laughs> of the calendar, so that was, wow. very, that was very exciting. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, there's a lot of fun things, uh, a lot of ideas. Well, it's nice that I know the Animal Welfare League, the shelter, works with some of the rescue groups because I think, like, we got a Great Pyrenees in, perhaps, and I think we ended up transferring that to a Great Pyrenees group that would have had more success. I think they're based in Middleburg, more success in finding a, a home for that animal than we would here in Alexandria where we have smaller homes Absolutely. And, and we live in an urban area. And they would also have the expertise dealing with that type of that breed, breed, which might have uh, various you know, medical conditions that come up maybe later in life or problems. Yeah, because Middleburg, I know they have, one of their pet stores there has a Great Pyrenees mm -hmm. you know, afternoon quite frequently. So apparently in the Middleburg area, a lot of people like the great big dogs. 
which you couldn't have in your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you would have to give up one of your bedrooms. <laughs> exactly. So this is definitely something that you would recommend for people? Absolutely, absolutely. It's a good way to really help out a homeless animal, help uh, free up and spaces in the that, shelter. Gives you, you that companion. It gives you your little furry companion. And um, so you get to have a dog, you get to test it out, and then you can decide if you want to adopt. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for sharing, and thank you to You're Karen welcome. for bringing the Byron. And we'll <laughs> thank you. Stay tuned, don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs>